Hello, everybody. Dr. Joan Effland here. I'm here with my wonderful colleague, Heather Hewitt. We are going to be talking today about the practice of recovery from processed food addiction. Welcome to Food Addiction Fridays, and thank you so much, Chef AJ, for inviting us here today. So many of us have had the experience of going into a professional's office, wondering, suspecting, needing help with processed food addiction, and we don't get it. So Heather, who is a naturopath, is going to talk to us about her journey as a naturopath, working in environments which are geared towards helping with processed food addiction and environments which are not. So this is going to be incredibly revealing. We are going behind the scenes of doctor's offices and you are going to see exactly why sometimes you get help and sometimes you don't. So Heather, could you start us off by telling us how you got here? Mm -hmm. um, I love this question because this is actually a dream come true for me because I have a long story, actually. I'm going to give you the short of it. Um, just after many years of not even knowing I had food addiction and reaching out to other health professionals and they had diagnosed me with eating disorders, um, which took me on a long, frustrating journey, I got to this place after I had just come to, it felt like my rock bottom. I was in this horrible cycle of binging and purging and bulimia. And after trying a very restrictive um, type of food plan some years ago, I had bulimia in remission for 10 years and it came back mm. and it was just all encompassing. I couldn't do anything. It was just day in and day out, this cycle going on. I was on Facebook. I typed in the search food addiction because I had come across that phrase but then still struggled with it because there's so much counter information to it. So I was back and forth. But I typed into the search food addiction and I came across a group, food addiction education Facebook group. And it had these um, brain scans at the top. And I says, hmm, I love science. This may be more knowledge based. This may be something that might be something to it. So I joined the group. I was in there for a bit, for, but I was still not 100% certain about food addiction. So I left the group. I kind of was in, did some intuitive eating again, which I don't know why I thought that was going to work, but I tried it again. So I came back to the food addiction group. I must have commented or posted something because soon after that, you reached out to me and PM and asked me if I would like to tell you what was going on. You know, what was, I guess, what my challenge was or something. And I was like, wow, Dr. Iflin reached out to me? Who does this? So I told you what had happened. Um, I was even willing to pay like one-on-one -on -one with you. And you says, no, just tell me what's going on. And I did, and I kind of went through my history and then you told me about the addiction reset community and you said, just give it, just give it a chance. And I went to my husband and he's like, not another, not another one. Because I had been in so many groups and I could sit here for hours telling you about it. So I told him, I think I had a feeling that this was going to work. And I think part of it was, this was my, it felt like my last, the last house mm -hmm. on the block. Mm -hmm. So I went and thought, I said, you know what, I am going to get my bank statement out. I am going to calculate how much money I've been spending on my binge food, which is something I didn't ever want to see because I was in denial about it. I wanted to stay in denial. So I sat down, I um, calculated out how much it was, and it came to be like around $500. And I went to him and I said, look, this is how much I've been spending. He says, yeah, I know. <laughs> and we can't afford another group. I says, look, just give me a month. 
if it doesn't work in 30 days, then I will quit. So I was determined. And especially after, and oh, this is what's the interesting point. Within 24 hours, and I didn't know this is what was going on, which you explained so well within the group, is that the addicted neurons are like, no, I think you should quit. And within the first 24 hours, I was hearing this, but then you reached out to me again and said, hey, there's a conference call that's going to start in 15 minutes. And I was like, oh, oh, all right, all right. So I got on and after I got on, I was hooked because I heard science married to kindness and compassion. And I was hooked, yeah. started going. And it was amazing. So after 30 days, I was able to go back to my husband and said, see, I didn't spend one penny on binge food this month. So he says, okay, there's nothing. So right off the bat, you saved $440 in the first month. Yes, exactly. And that didn't even include, and I told him this, I said that didn't include every time I went out for food for me, you know, fast food, binge food, whatever, I would pick up everybody else's food because I felt guilty. Uh huh. Well, I didn't even include all the extra money I was spending on buying their stuff, their drugs. Oh, gosh, things. that is such a great story. Yeah. Heather, so you you found food addiction recovery and yes. it worked for you after trying intuitive eating. And I know you tried many different food plan groups and um, and eating disorders diagnoses. You found that it was actually processed food addiction. Yeah. OK, so back up, back up, back up, because those aren't the only things you were doing. You actually took a degree. Yes. You actually got yourself heavily educated. Yes. Tell us about your, that pathway. So that pathway started way back a um, long time ago after I did get outpatient treatment for eating disorders. And it did not help. I did it for a whole year, spent $13,000 mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the time that I spent doing it on top of that, I ended up finding this one particular clinic, um, this nurse I met, and she did um, colonic therapy or colon hydrotherapy treatment. I tried, trust me, I tried everything out there. I said, I will try this. And there was... Um, a very restrictive eating plan that came with it. So I did that and I even went to school for that. I mean, I have literally a whole binder of certifications and degrees. You name it, I've, I've done it. And yeah, you know what, just I'll pause here for a second. Go into that if you don't mind. What so, are all the certifications and degrees that you have? Well, not only the naturopathy degree, but I have a certification in herbs, um, herbalist, homeopathy, um, colon hydrotherapy, electrodermal screening, EFT. Um, there's some emotional type modalities, uh, flower remedies, uh, you name it. I tried it, I did it. And once I did it, I hired the best practitioner to train me. I took schooling and get a certification in it because I believed what they told me. I believed that this was going to stop my binge eating and my mm -hmm. issues with food. Mm -hmm. They said, this is going to get to the root of the problem. And I believed it. Yes. Again and again. Okay. So you... You did, you did everything. You did everything. You got your own training. You went to the programs. You joined, you joined, you joined, you tried this, you tried this, and none of it worked. Tell us about what it was like to go to work in a doctor's office. Um, with You have your naturopathic degree now. You are certified, you're licensed, and now you go to work in a, another office you get a job with a doctor. What was that like? Oh, that's very interesting. So I, I was so excited. I was like, yes, because the whole point of me coming to this point was this is supposed to get to the root of the problem. This is going to solve things, not only for me, my family, but other people. I was just full of hope. 
So I've worked in a few different settings. I've worked in a clinic. That was my first setting. So I did have to do internship for a year. So I started with that. And it was interesting to work alongside many different types of alternative medicine doctors and nurses mm -hmm. and MDs. Um, and they were very laser focused on whatever modality they followed mm -hmm. that worked. So of course, me being in the clinical setting, I had to follow what their treatment protocol was. And I was like, yeah, this is supposed to work because they said it's, it's supposed to work. So I'm working with different patients following whatever the treatment protocol was. And I was just so, I don't know, enthusiastic and just really hoping it would work. And the patient would come back for follow-ups. And of course it didn't work. Didn't work. And this happened over and over and over and over again. And it was and very- How did that make you feel? Beyond frustrated. And I have had a propensity for blaming myself for things. So of course I thought it was me. So I would go back to, I'd always somehow, wherever I worked, I would pick up a mentor always because I always thought I could learn more or whatever. So I would go to whoever my mentor was and ask them for direction and tell them what was going on. And I was frustrated. And they would say, well, just do this or just um, tell them to take more of that or tell them to do this or give them this food plan. It was always very directive. Um, this is going to work. And then when I would come back after I would do that, <clears throat> tell them it didn't work and what their side effects were. Oh, well, they're, they're, they're not telling the truth. They didn't take They're not telling. Okay. So blame the patient, blame the patient. Or they're just lazy or mm. they're non-compliant that, that label a lot. And I was thinking, and I, I just was like, I don't know. I have, there's a few people that work really hard. And what I thought about it was myself. I went through that same thing. That's why what led me to try and get so many certifications and degrees, because I thought if I learned it, maybe I can get it down and do it better. And I, I just, it oh didn't gosh, equate. Heather, this is just breaking my heart. So you stayed in that clinic as an intern for a year? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I did for a year. And then I worked there after that. Then I ended up leaving because I would get so frustrated. I felt like I felt this inner conflict because mm -hmm. I saw myself in these patients. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that, well, I know whenever I was prescribed a food plan a supplement, an herb, whatever, I followed it to the letter and I still had horrendous problems and binging. And it just, it really, I felt defeated. So I left. And then I have to say my, it would probably kick up or activate my own food addiction. So I would eat over it and get, go home and frustrated and binge and of course, when it became worse and worse and worse and would take over, then I had a hard time going to work after that. This is what we're finding is that practitioners are in trouble themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we often get people into our training programs that um, they just like, I can't take this training because I am having trouble myself. Well, we know that in the course of training, you'll get what really works and you'll, you'll get your own food under control and you're generating stories and experiences that you can use directly with, with clients. But, you know, 93% of Americans have high triglyceride, blood glucose, blood pressure, cholesterol, or waist to hip ratio. That means that the practitioner that you're going to is in trouble themselves. Yes. Yes, and I can speak to that because working in these medical settings, I discovered that they had food addiction too and didn't mm -hmm. know it because they were always trying some new diet, the food that they ordered into the office, and I would see them eating. 
And then just seeing them not only eating it at their desk, but then hearing what their symptoms were. Years later, I didn't know this at the time, but years later, I could see that they were struggling themselves with food addiction. With food addiction. Americans are eating 73% of their food in processed foods, which means that just to know what's going on behind the scenes with your practitioner's office, there are processed foods in there. Uh, there people are reinforcing each other in eating these processed foods and the office is sick. So this is commonly the situation that people are walking into seeking help. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't get help if you're drowning from someone who's also drowning. Mm-hmm. So what was your next experience, Heather? So after that, I tried working for myself and I had a home office for a while. And I says, I'm going to try a different approach. I'm going to try some different things here. Um, I did. And I still had the same issue. (laughs) I did over and over and over again. And it was really, really difficult, really difficult. And after a while, I um, somehow... And I have to say some of this too was my own food addiction as well, but I did notice the stress from the frustration, the stress of blaming myself and the stress of not knowing what to do also contributed to uh, lapsing and just ending up in the gutter. And then not having any satisfaction from what you're doing. Yes. Put in all this time all this money, all these trainings, and it's not working. So not only are you frustrated, but you're not getting a return. You're not getting the satisfaction of helping people. I saw a headline recently, one in six doctors wants to quit. It's because they're not getting any satisfaction out of what they're doing. But of course, if you're trained as a medical doctor, you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to pay off. And you, you're trapped in doing these ineffectual things. You can't leave. Maybe you have a family to support and those loans to pay off. So Heather, what did you do next? Then I tried um, something called electrodermal screening. I found the best doctor in the area in Illinois. He is amazing. I actually still see him, but Uh, He moved to Florida, so it's kind of more of a telehealth type of thing. But um, I learned from him how to do electrodermal screening. And this is supposed to pinpoint more what supplements, herbs, homeopathy, flower remedies, all those things. And it's kind of based on the nate, the tapping, you know, back tapping and that type of thing. So it does work and it's great, but... It does not address processed food addiction. So yeah. that part was missing. So I did get I did get some satisfaction from it working for myself. I did get some satisfaction for it working for my family and patients. But there was still the issue with uh, lots of side effects. It would work for a while. Mm. And then patients would come in and have complaints. There was still issue, and it it was the reason given was, oh, they have a candida outbreak, or it's they're eating too much sugar, or it was always something having to do with the patient, but the root of the problem was not ever seen yeah. or discussed, which is processed food addiction. So then you did end up working for another doctor, am I right? I did. There was one more after that, maybe two. I have to actually sit down and write how many people I worked for. But each time it was, they felt they had the key to reversing chronic health problems, disease, and illness every mm-hmm. time. Whether it was where I worked with a chiropractor, I've worked with some an MD, I've worked with so many different doctors, and it was always the same thing. And I would come back and say, well, this patient, this didn't go well. And this patient, that didn't go well. This happened or that happened. And it always get directed back 
they're non-compliant. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're eating too much sugar. They're this or that. And I, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just frustrating. I felt yeah. like tearing my hair out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. And this breaks my heart. There are thousands of practitioners going through exactly what you've gone through. Their lives are just miserable because the things that they've been told will work are not working. Uh, and we all know about the patients, uh, the clients, the group members who have gone through this and been devastated by it. And when we get them into our community all the time, um, and it's a trauma that we're quite aware of that we need to, to work with. So I also, I seem to recall you, you sharing with me about um, working with a particular doctor who was very difficult. Do you, do you want to share about that? Yes. Um, I, so I'm not going to go into specifics of who it was. I would just say that there was a bit of um, ego there with whenever I would bring something or address something. Um, it, it was, they didn't want to hear it and they felt that either I was wrong or it was the other person. So and, they kind of turned on you. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Because it didn't start off that way. And one thing that I can say about myself is that I am very intuitive and I do connect well with patients and connect with people. Mm -hmm. So, and then I have the empathy part and this person was the opposite of empathy. They did not have empathy at all. So if I brought something and someone was upset and crying and they really tried the program and it just didn't work and I would come to them about it, you know, could we try this? Could we do this? Nope. No, nope, I was wrong. They're wrong. Everybody in the world is wrong and he knows best. So after a while, I just, I could not work in that environment anymore. I just couldn't do it. So oh, Heather, I just, I mean, I, my heart is breaking for you. And I know there are thousands of practitioners out there. Okay. So who are experiencing the same nightmare? This is a nightmare. I do want to just say, if you are a practitioner and you're listening to this, please come to um, Food Addiction Recovery Advocate and you can get training that will turn this around for you. You will learn how to talk to your patients and you will learn what to say to them and you will learn what works and what doesn't work. All right, so Heather, um, let's, let's go on. You made the transition, you found Food Addiction Education, through Food Addiction Education Facebook group, you got into the Addiction Reset community, which is all online, all over the world, not expensive, and you plunged in. You got results in the very first month. You stopped binging. You stopped um, buying all the extra food. What do you think happened in that first month? What was so different? about coming into an online food addiction recovery community. What was so different about that from all these dozens and dozens, maybe a hundred other experiences you had, what was the difference? Hmm. Um, I mentioned earlier, it was science married to kindness and compassion. In the other groups, it was just based on, uh, you know, I've done 12 step groups, I've done Facebook groups, I've done other meetup groups, as well as the um, outpatient eating disorder groups. And it was never based on science ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I never knew the why. And there's so much talk of willpower, you know, willpower. But in the arc, we get why power, having the oh, why. Oh, yeah, why power. And then skill power, you're actually developing skills, which blew my mind. As a matter of fact, as you know, you and I worked on um, actually outlining how many skills that someone actually learns in the arc. And it came to 149. 149. Well, imagine that's like having 149 different tools in your house. <laughs> in your that, heart. Yes, that you can use 
for whenever. It's just amazing. But um, I actually forgot what the original question was. Well, what was it like in that first oh, month? What was it like to well, come into the ARC? So what it was like, I remember the first call I went to, as I mentioned, you were hosting the conference call. And I have to say, I got on and I was listening in and I'm hearing people talk and I was like, uh, I don't know, because I have so much trauma from other groups, but I'm just listening. And you went around from each person to each person and they're learning and developing skills. And then it came to me. And the way I was treated, I was listened to. You heard me, you saw me, you saw my pain. And then there was this hope that I felt like I had for the first time. And I can't explain it. It just, I felt this massive shift happen during that call. Mm -hmm. And I found out, you mentioned when the next time was, I got on the next one. And I have to say, um, the consistency, I went to two calls a day, every day. It was an intention hour and then retention hour. And then we worked on the brain training exercises. But I had this, I made sure every time I went to a call, I had my, my book. And I would sit there and I treated it like a class, actually. Because for me, that's what works for me. Mm -hmm. So I had my notebook. I was sitting there. I wrote out kind of key points. And I still have it, by the way. I still Do have you? it. And I go oh. back and I read it and I look through it. I wrote out key points. I wrote out, you know, we do our affirmations and gratitude. We would read from a recovery book in the morning and in the afternoon, the brain training exercises. And I wrote that out. Mm -hmm. I did that every day for the first year. Yes. And yes. I had massive changes. Even in the first month, I stopped binging right away. Nothing ever stopped my bulimia like that. Mm -hmm. Not Prozac, not anything I've ever done in the past but it stopped it immediately. But this is how I showed up to it. Whenever I do something, I put my heart and soul into it and I'm 100% committed and consistent. And that's what happened. That's what it was like. You know, and I, I do, I remember all of that so clearly. And then I learned that you are you're a naturopath and I grabbed you and I said, why don't you host an hour? I remember you were so brave and you just went into it and you did it. Wow. And I didn't know for a couple of years that it was actually terrifying, for which <laughs> I apologize. You know, now I know that you need to be trained and you need to do an internship and be in a group. And now we know exactly how to get somebody ready to host. But Heather, you just jumped in. And what was that like? You know, I have to say... Um... It was a very, it was a great experience because everybody there, even though I was just scared, everybody there was very compassionate. Mm -hmm. I didn't think for one minute I was going to be thrown out of the meeting or someone was going to heckle me or somebody was going to say, get out of here, you're awful. I didn't think that for one minute because it's not like that in the arc at all. Yeah. Everybody is kind and compassionate and supportive. So it was really like being amongst friends. It mm -hmm. really was. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you're a director of the ARC. So we're talking, Heather came into the ARC five years ago. Five years ago. Is this your, are we about the time of your fifth anniversary? No, it would be four years this summer. Four. Four years this summer. Okay. Yeah. Um. This is a long-term home. The ARC is a long-term home. And now I think we had three or four hours a day of programming when you came in four years ago. Now uh, we have 15 to 17 hours a day yes. of programming. So recently I got to, uh, we have, um, I, I got to meet somebody who's spent their career in health systems evaluation. They have four degrees in this field. And I asked them, what, what is it about the ARC that works? And they have quite a bit of experience with the ARC. And they said, it's the constant access. It's mm -hmm. being able to open your screen and be among your people 
uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. And if there's nothing live for the few hours a day when there's nothing live, you go to the library and get out a video that I've made or Heather's made, or you can get uh, the conference call recording, which we still have. Um, so Heather, how do you use the ARC? How do, you know, you've had, after what, decades of no success, you have four consistent years of success. Mm -hmm. I have five consistent years of success. I have my food under control. I'm 71 years old. I'm looking forward to another 30 years. I got through COVID, uh, even living alone without feeling lonely. And I'm constantly growing. We're introducing a whole new program to put incurable chronic diseases into remission. I use the ARC all day long. I'm meeting with ARC people all day long. Heather, if you were, so t tell us how you use the ARC. And um, then I'm gonna ask you one more question about um, what you would say to somebody who's thinking about what to do next. How do you use the ARC? What, do you, what parts of the ARC do you like? Oh my goodness. Um, I'd have to say I totally agree with the person that said the access because just knowing I have access to me, that's like carrying insurance, my insurance policy around with me. I just, you know, you know what this is like, I just got it. It's like, if you, you, um, it's like an EpiPen. Yes. You got stung by exactly a it. immediate relief, immediate safety. Yes. The screen for somebody who's now this is something we haven't talked about, but we were addicted by the neurologists at the processed food industry. So we mm -hmm. have these hypersensitive brains, but being able to just open a screen and get your brain calmed down from being around compassionate, caring, wise, science based people that's like an EpiPen. Yes. And I love that analogy, analogy better than insurance policy because that's what it's like. I just feel like I'm carrying protection around with me at any time that I have access to. Mm -hmm. But how I use it is I make sure um, first thing in the morning I get on intention hour. And I love it because when I'm preparing breakfast for everybody, I have it playing in the background. I have my he headphones in actually. Mm -hmm. And I'm Preparing and getting things done. I'm hearing. Um, it's calming. It's soothing. I always do a check in if I can. Always. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I don't, I'm not in the nucleus or in the middle of it. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm connecting once I speak and say something. I mean, mm -hmm. relationships, if you think about it, having a positive, close relationship with someone requires both way communication. Yep. If, if we were just in a relationship and they just talked to us and we never spoke, it wouldn't be the, great, the best relationship. So I make sure I check in, which helps me set my intentions for the day. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I also make sure that later in the day, I'm hosting, you know, four days a week. And it was right perfect timing for me because it was during my witching hour I would call where I used to turn yeah, into yeah exactly and right at that time period it saved me hosting all these years because now I'm not having that feeling come back yeah yeah, and yeah. really consistent this is so, this is very science-based you open a screen and you get among your people you actually get an oxytocin release it's a chemical inside your body which travels to the dopamine pathways and, and stabilizes them. This yes. is not woo-woo. This is not, oh, gee, you know, this is spiritual. No, no, it's chemicals inside your body. We, yes. this is the, you know, talk, uh, Heather, use that great phrase, the why power instead of the willpower. When you know why opening your screen stops your cravings, opening your screen to a group of caring people, wise, expert, science-based people, then, dang, you're going to do it. And it works. Yes. Yes. So then also working through the brain training exercises that helps with emotional management and keeping equanimity and mm -hmm. my emotions 
no equilibrium. That has been huge. And I'm able to use that tool at any time. I was sitting at a traffic light stopped and something was bothering me. And I used it because of flashcard that I learned in the ARC, which mm -hmm. has been super effective. Um, and then we have something called premium where you meet with a small group over Zoom. Mm -hmm. And we set our intentions, affirmations, and gratitude. And I end, I'm doing it twice a day now. Yep. yep. I'm doing it in the evening at five has helped me go to bed early. Like I should be. I've been yes, working on okay, it for a so it's a cue. So those are my favorite parts, but I have to say the working with you as well as other individuals in the ARC has also helped my recovery. Mm -hmm. um, soon after I joined the ARC, you started the training program mm -hmm. and there was a beta. Mm -hmm. I got at first I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. One but more training. And I did it. And I have to say, I believe the training really kept me engaged because there is that six month period where dopamine drops off after someone tries something new. Mm -hmm. and, that is awesome. that. Yeah. and getting into the training and getting myself engaged and learning more of the why, you mm -hmm. know, developing, flexing my why power muscles, then mm -hmm. it kept me, kept me engaged and it kept me here even now. All right. So we're going to close in just a few minutes, but I would like to ask Heather to talk about the Food Addiction Recovery Advocate Certification. This is the only science-based training in food addiction recovery. No matter what kind of practitioner you are, no matter whether you're a lay person who wants to work in this field, you can get specific, practical, hands-on, immediately applicable training to make you effective. So to bridge your existing education to the patient who is addicted. And I've done the research on this. I believe that over 80% of Americans are severely addicted to processed foods. It's the tobacco addiction model that came in to processed foods when the tobacco companies bought Kraft Nabisco and General Foods in the mid 1980s. And we just have to own it. If you can own it, if you can see it, if you can get your brain wrapped around that uh, people are addicted to processed foods, just like they were addicted to cigarettes, then you can have a successful practice mm -hmm. and, and end this frustration. Heather, probably, I'm gonna, I, I didn't tell her I was gonna ask her this question, but if you had had your FAR certification way back when you were doing that first internship, do you think you would have been satisfied, happy, purposeful in that job? Oh, absolutely. Because first of all, you mentioned why. I didn't know why. I why could not is, yeah, why do I tell people what to do and they don't do it? Or it yeah. doesn't work. They do do it and it doesn't work. All right, exactly. we're running out of time. So I want to make sure you get a chance to talk about the FARO certification. Tell us, Heather. That's exciting because I got had the honor of working on some of the curriculum with you, Joan, and it was it's just great. I'm going to um, kind of show everybody what it looks like. But tilt it, is, tilt it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yes. I have one of those too. So really exciting, but the training is there's nothing like it. It's just amazing. You actually learn actually learn the science of what's going on in the brain when those stress pathways are activated. When you see processed food, you learn with what a trigger and a cue is mm -hmm. and how to help people manage their cues and triggers and how to help yourself. And how this is the best part, you learn how not to direct and you help to direct. someone come to the conclusion and find the truth within themselves. It's very respectful. Them. So it's, it's an amazing training. It's a training that not only will help you in your own life and with your own family, but with your own patients or clients, but it's something that you'll have for the rest of your life 
Yes. It's life-saving. If you know somebody whom you would like to help, as a lay person, you can join the lay person training. As a professional, you can join the professional training. Or if you're ready for a job uh, with us, uh, you can join the art manager training. So, all right, Heather, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope everybody listening has brand new hope. These are brand new approaches. I've spent 27 years um, getting my PhD in addictive nutrition, writing the textbook, so that I could bring you a reliable program. And now we are. So do visit the websites in the show notes. And I will just look forward to connecting with you and getting to know you. Thank you, Heather. And thank you, Chef AJ. I appreciate you. Bye-bye now.